Taron at Fantasia Land is one of the most visually stunning roller coasters in the whole world. Set amongst a Norse village in a rock canyon, this intimate multi-launch coaster has a devilishly twisted layout that crosses over and under itself a whopping 58 times. It's exceedingly rare to have a thrill coaster with as much theming as Taron. The theming is absolutely world class, but is the coaster itself as well? Find out in this review of Taron. Taron opened in 2016 as part of the Klugheim section of the park. Klugheim is one of the most stunning themed areas in any amusement park. The entire section is engulfed in these shimmering gray rock walls. It's some of the most impressive rock work out there. And then the center of the land features traditional Nordic architecture. The whole area feels like a maze between the winding pathways and Taron itself. It's nearly impossible to tell where Taron is going next, as it rockets over and under itself and pretty much everything else in Klugheim. Taron brings the kinetic energy to Klugheim, which makes it almost as fun to watch as it is to ride. And the area in the ride is accompanied by a custom I'm a Score soundtrack that is one of the best out there. It feels like a score fit for a battle sequence in a movie. It really gets you amped up for your ride. Fantasialand is one of the most highly attended parks in all of Europe, and since Taron is arguably the park's signature attraction, it understandably will have the longest line most days. I've visited Fantasialand a few times, and this coaster typically has a 45 to 60 minute wait all day long. It's nearly impossible to avoid waiting for this attraction. Taron is not in the park's quick pass skip the line system and then you cannot use the usual methods of getting in line at park opening or closing. Taron opens one hour after Fantasialand's gates open. Combine that with the fact that this coaster takes a little bit to warm up, and I would not advise heading there first thing. Taron gives its strongest rides in the mid to late afternoon, but Fantasialand will always close this line early. They do post the time they close the line by the main entrance so you can plan ahead. In my most recent visit, the ride was closing an hour before close. Taron's queue line is a labyrinth, much like the coaster in Klugheim. It has a series of winding pathways, and then one large section of switchbacks. While the line is usually long, it at least moves at a continuous pace, since Fantasialand usually runs three to four trains on Taron with good operations. The only hiccup is that Taron often has small bouts of downtime throughout the day. From my experience, the issues are often resolved quickly, but they can easily add an extra 15 to 20 minutes onto your wait. Once you reach the station, you have the option to wait for the front row, or be assigned a different row. While you may have to wait quite a bit more for the front, I strongly recommend trying that seat. This is the best seat to appreciate all of Taron's world-class near misses and theming. Plus, you also get that rush of wind on the coaster's two launches. The back is arguably a little bit better for forces, so that is the second best seat and the employees will often honor seating requests for that row. Taron is a play on the Russian word for battering ram, so the trains are fittingly themed to rams. The trains look fantastic with the ram heads on front, and they are super comfortable as well. The new generation Intamin trains are truly top notch. They have high centers of gravity which accentuate all the turns and they are very open too. You have a simple and comfy lap bar that leaves your entire upper body free to experience this coaster's forces. Once dispatched, Taron rounds a corner and comes to a halt on the first launch track. After the music builds to a crescendo, you launch from zero to 50 miles per hour, or 80 kilometers per hour, in 2.6 seconds. It's a decently forceful LSM launch on par with the initial one on Velocicoaster, and I love the roar the LSMs make. You then soar through this giant overbank under and around rocks. All of the overbanks on Taron ride similarly. They really don't have any force to them. Instead, they're all about the near misses. That is followed by my favorite element on the ride, the Camelback. This hill offers some fantastic sustained floater airtime up front, and just a sustained airtime in the back that comes closer to weak ejector. But this element is not just about the airtime. The resultant drop banks to the left and into a tunnel. The drop is underbanked, so it offers some awesome laterals. 
especially since you're still out of your seat for the start of them. You then rip through this S-twist that offers good laterals and a quick pop of ejector airtime. I thought the element was a little stronger towards the back because you're pulled through it, but it's great anywhere. After a strong start, Taryn starts meandering. The rest of the first half doesn't do much in the force department. You get some faint laterals on a few turns, and there's one S-dip with some very weak floater airtime. But this section is mostly about the visuals as you dive through buildings, past rocks, and over pathways. You really need to be up front for this part, or else this section can feel very sluggish. But then you drop down to the ride's lowest point and hit the second launch, which accelerates you to the ride's top speed of 73 miles per hour or 117 kilometers per hour. This launch is what earned Taran the honor of the world's fastest multi-launch coaster. This launch has a good kick to it, and the sense of speed is amplified since you're all boxed in. Taran then winds upwards through a bank turn. You get a quick blast of positive G's at the start of this element, and then you get a refreshing spritz as the adjacent waterfall misses riders. This is arguably the best near miss on the ride, especially since it does actually hit guests to an extent. This upwards turn brings you to Taran's highest point of 98 feet or 30 meters, which seems surprisingly short for a coaster with Taran's top speed. You then navigate these elevated S-bends with a little less speed than you may expect, so they unfortunately don't do too much before diving down to the left. But if you are in the back row, you will at least get some weak floater airtime and laterals on this dip as you are pulled down it. Taran then rockets through the ride's strongest overbank, which pairs the usually great near misses with some mild force. Taran then charges over back-to-back -back S hills. The first offers a great pop of ejector airtime and strong laterals. The second offers similarly good laterals, but only a weak pop of floater airtime. You then zoom around an elevated helix that hugs the rock work before heading towards the ride's final bunny hill. But on the way, you hit a trim break, and it will slow you down. I imagine the bunny hill could give some nice ejector airtime without the loss of speed, but because you're trimmed, it only offers decent floater airtime throughout the whole train. Taran then winds into the brake run, ending the 4,331 foot or 1,320 meter long coaster. Like many Intamin creations, Taran is immaculately smooth. There is not even a hint of a rattle. This smooth track work combined with the amazing trains makes this one of the most rewritable coasters out there. Taran's biggest flaw is its pacing. The start of the first and second halves are great. The sense of speed is incredible, and there's a strong mix of airtime and laterals. But the ends of both sections really seem to fade. It feels like Taran is meandering at points. Maybe that was deliberate so you could appreciate the theming more at a leisurely pace, but I just wish those parts could have offered some sort of forces to go along with those visuals. For comparison, I think this was executed better on Velocicoaster's first half. So what would I rate Taran? I would give this Intamin multi-launch coaster an 8.5 out of 10. Taran is a very good roller coaster. The ride's biggest strength is that otherworldly theming. The way Taran is integrated with Klugheim is nothing short of amazing. This leads to some of the best near misses of any coaster, and it's darn near impossible to memorize this coaster's twisted layout. And unlike most coasters with this level of theming, Taran is a thrill ride. The launches, first Camelback, and S-Hills are fantastic. The ride is uneven though as it fades towards the end of the first and second halves, which is why I do think it's a bit overrated, but it's still a great coaster that offers a ride experience matched by very few rides. I do think Fly is now the best attraction at Fantasialand, but I think most people will be 50-50 which ride they prefer. So those are my thoughts on Taran, the stunningly beautiful launch coaster at Fantasialand. Have you ridden this coaster? Or do you think it's a little overrated like me? I would love to hear what you think about Taran down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more Roller Coaster Amuse Park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.